Hey guys, welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review on Kickstarter. Area 1851 Express. I'm guessing that means it's a smaller version of a bigger game, which I haven't ever played before, but in Area 1851 Express, it's by uh, 524 Labs. It's uh, illustrated by Lucas Serrano and Justin Blasque. And in the game, you're going to be basically doing a draft. Let's see if I can get this guy back on there. Nope. Ah, that's okay. Magical picture! And in the game, you're basically going to be drafting widgets to build things. And when you do that, you're going to put them together and formulate a contraption of some type in which you're going to read it out loud and it's going to have some humorous effect, most likely. And you're going to then attack the players or gather points and whatnot. Sometimes you're going to get victory points, you'll be able to use actions. Sometimes you'll uh, get to save little actions, which you're going to have like little shovels or little thumbs up and whatnot. There's points in the game you're going to gather and you're going to be basically going around drafting cards from uh, your hand, passing it to another player rinsing and repeating as players continue to take cards in their hand and play a singular card out. Now there's certain rules as to how you place the cards down, which I'll show you down below. And uh, every round you're gonna be getting new cards and be able to do different things. Whoever gets the most points at the end of the game based on the contraptions and widgets and wonkers they make is gonna win the game. Area 1851 Express. Let's go ahead and take a look at this alien cowboy Western style theme. So here we have 18, 51 Express, and uh, we're playing with two players here. To begin the game, you're going to give somebody this, uh, which is basically like a turn uh, sheet, as well as it tells you what all the different uh, abilities do and all your different tokens do. It gives you an idea of when the game ends and how you play, uh, but it's pretty, pretty simple. Everybody's gonna get seven cards to start with in this scrap deck here. And as you notice, they're double-sided. There is a scrap card, and then on the other side is a thing of some type. Now, um, you're also going to set aside these tokens here, any of these um, other action tokens, and uh, you're going to also have these things that just going to make a deck of things. They're all basically the same thing. They aren't worth any points or anything, but they give you certain connectors, and they count as a base piece. You're going to need a base piece before you can place any modifiers down. So if you don't ever have a base piece, that's where you're going to go to gather it. You're going to then select a player to start the game, and... Um, or select, sorry, you're gonna do a drafting phase to start the game. And here's how it works, it's pretty simple. On your turn, you're gonna select a card you want and you're going to place it um, in your workspace area. Now remember, when you start the game, there's a certain cards you're gonna want, like these guys here have a little base symbol. You won't be able to utilize these necessarily face down uh, to begin with because you're going to need to have a base to put them on. And there's certain ruling as to how they connect. And as you can see, there's a connection just like that. And it gives you points and it also gives you some kind of bonus ability here. But to begin with, we'll go ahead and go ahead and select this one here. We'll put it face down and so will the other players as well. Uh, maybe they'll go ahead and place this one here. After that, you're gonna go ahead and distribute them basically clockwise. But in this case, since it's only two players, you'll just pass them to the next players. And also, you're gonna go ahead and flip these cards over. Uh, that is one action you can simply do. Pretty simple, right? You can go ahead and just place a card down and then flip it up. Another option is you can attach a mod. So now players are gonna go ahead and look and they could place another base if they wanted or they can place a mod. And the mod has requirements. You're gonna have to be able to fill in these slots here. So for instance, he could place that one just like that, but maybe he couldn't play something like, let's see, I don't have, there's nothing in this hand that would do it, but if there was a, a mod that had only two slots, it wouldn't work. Now in this case, maybe I'll go ahead and place this one here because I like this one, that looks pretty good. And this player over here can go ahead and place this one over here. And then we're gonna go ahead and flip. So this is now the mods and we're gonna go ahead and add them to the things. And at, at any point uh, after you have flipped your cards, you're gonna go ahead and check to see if you've completed your things. And in this case, the highly radioactive Omni Translator is complete. There's no more on this side or on this side, which means it's fully done, in which case you're gonna score points. So he's gonna get zero plus two points. You take these points here. He's also gonna get this ability, which is just one of these little tokens here. And some of them that have the token symbols will be the same. So in this case is a plus or a thumbs up. And then you have this recycle ability. And if you go ahead and look on this sheet over here, it should show a recycle. It says, okay, add two cards from uh, this gadget to your scrap heap. So you would take these, put them face down into your scrap heap, which is down there. Pretty cool little ability. Now this guy actually didn't finish his gadgets because he's got one more on this side in which case he's going to continue the rounds and he's going to go ahead and pass now now another thing is obviously this player is going to try and find a match for this side over here if he possibly can now if he can't like in this case he can't he could if he wants to play a card down uh that would be like this 
and that would be a scrap and he can go ahead and complete his gadget just like that regardless of it being being able being able of turning it you can actually leave it just like this in which case this would be a complete gadget this player here can go ahead and choose another base if there is one in his hand and put it face down and then on the count of three we would flip and he would of course not flip because he's going to actually be going okay i'm gonna put this here and then flip right and he'll go okay i'm gonna put it over here now and this player is going to have a new base and then the, it's going to keep going with the drafting now if he doesn't have a base in his hand right he can go ahead and place his card down and at the same time simultaneously he would choose to not flip he would choose to discard this card here and get a thing which is going to be a new base now the things don't really give much they'll give maybe an ability of some kind but they won't usually give any tokens but uh, you're going to be able to at least have bases that you can utilize in the game. And that's going to be how the game works. You're going to go back and forth, continuing to make things. And uh, when you complete them, like this one here, it's going to score him his four, his five points. In addition, he's going to get to do his recycle ability. And then whatever this one is over here, it says on the board here, gain one rep for each card in this gadget that doesn't match this symbol, which would be uh, all three of them, right? And uh, then over here, there's nothing. It's just one point. And then these cards are all going to go. And eventually what's going to happen is the, the end of the round is going to go on where there's going to be just uh, cards in your scrap heap and whatnot. And if you didn't finish something, like for instance, these players had just these left, these are um, go, go and be put into your scrap heap or you can go ahead and utilize your scrap heap to try and finish cards. If you can finish it, you're going to be able to score it, but you won't get stuff like the bonus abilities and whatnot. So there's certain things you can do at the end of the round that will allow you to at least utilize your scrap heap. Now, scrap heaps are never going to be turned face up anymore, but they're utilized to help you kind of complete the gadgets that you have here. And if you can't, then you're going to go ahead and put them in your scrap heap. And then the next round is going to begin. You're going to take these cards here and, uh, so we're going to discard these. And then you're going to divvy divide, divide out seven more to each player again. And another round will complete. And then after you do that round, one more round. And then whoever has the most points at the end is the winner. Remember that these tokens can be pretty much used at any time you want. And they have specific abilities that will tell you down below there. And then, of course, all of the other unique abilities will be on the bottom of the cards. And the top is always going to be bonus points you're going to get. Whoever has the most of these at the end of the game is the winner. Let's come up. I'll give you a couple caveats and uh, then I'll tell you what I think about it. All right. So caveats for the Area 1851 Express. The first thing is the end of the round, you're going to use your scrap heap to make your gadgets and you're going to score only the rep points, but you won't get any of the bonuses like the little symbols and whatnot. And if you still can't, then the cards that are in your workspace will get discarded and you'll keep any scrap cards that are down below. Most of the time you're going to be getting scrap is from the card abilities that you make after completing a gadget. When you complete a gadget, it scores and it is removed instantly. It's basically called delivering a gadget and you're going to get all the points at the top and all the abilities down below in the order that you choose so that's pretty sweet as well three rounds most points wins at the end anyway hopefully it makes pretty good sense to you uh what do i think about this game well it reminds me of a game called dungeon draft by ultra pro i think is what it's called or upper deck one of the two in which case you're going to be basically drafting cards around making this little dungeon tableau and gaining powers to attack other monsters and whatnot in the deck that pop out scoring victory points it feels very similar in that aspect but what's different about this game is you're going to be basically making the different things you're going to be connecting them based on the connections you can if you can't form connections you're going to go ahead and use it utilize the scrap you're going to be able to switch your cards out for things that will allow you to have a base you're always going to have something to do every card in there regardless of whether it connects or not will be able to connect in some way or be used in some manner. So you never feel like your turn is wasted, which is really nice. In a lot of drafting games, you might get a, car, a hand of cards where you're like, I can't do anything, not in this game. And in fact, you can create multiple gadgets at once. You can have one over here that's half done and one over here that's just started or half done. And as long as at the end of the round, you've made them, uh, whether it be by scraps or previously and allowing you to get all the abilities and whatnot you will be actually continuing the game just as fairly long as anybody else now it just comes down to the fact of how you place the gadgets together and uh, the best combinations you can to gain the most victory points that is the key of the game choosing the right cards at the right moment and making sure you're going to score as many points as possible remembering the cards that are getting passed around the table and that is going to also benefit you as well a little bit of memory a little bit of point manipulation and then when to utilize these little tokens and if you don't utilize them at the end of the game they're worth points which can be the difference between winning and losing the artwork is really solid in the game and so is the theme it works pretty well you're basically just making sci-fi cowboys and indians 
type of unique gadgets and gadgets to fight against each other, I guess. They just some weird things. I mean, you might get something like, let's see here, a... <laughs> I'm going to try and find something I can make to show you guys. Maybe it's a hand-fashioned violin that flies erratically. Uh, maybe it's a leather violin that flies erratically. Uh, there's, there's tons of them, though. <laughs> something that gives you splinters, bright color that has feathers embroidered with a sturdy stand, which screeches, a pony, a bioengineered, worn out. So all these kind of things that you can kind of put together to make unique things. You're going to have tons of things to put together, but there's still strategy in how you want to put them together, whether you make it scrap or whether you don't. I love this game. This game was on par the first time I played this uh, as, as Dungeon Draft, because I really like Dungeon Draft. It's my favorite game of, of theirs uh, so, so far. This game won me over. After the second and third game, I started to enjoy this game more than that one, just because it offers just a little more variety, and you never feel like there's an empty hand that you can't do anything with, which kind of bumps this game up in my drafting top five. So this is probably one of my top five drafting games as far as just simply taking and placing and creating that tableau of things. It's fun. It's really good. If you like drafting games, you're going to really enjoy this one. It makes me want to play the non-Express game, which I don't even know if it exists or not, but I feel like this if this is called Express, maybe there's an Area 1851, and if there is, I want to play that. I love these type of drafting games. It also won Grant over. He likes he likes the uh, Dungeon Draft as well, but this one was just slightly a better than that as well. In fact, in the entire live stream, which you can watch on Unfiltered Gamer, uh, our, our Facebook page, we did it live, everyone had a really good time with this game, and the points came super close. I definitely think you should check this game out. It has great artwork. It's going to have great components. It already has really nice just for the prototype itself. I'm really excited to see what they do with it. And I hope I get my own copy after it comes out. You guys should definitely check it out. To go ahead and choose to back it down below in the description on Kickstarter. This game is super solid. I give it approval. <laughs> <laughs>